Welcome to the Colby Cast, episode 197. Thank you for joining us. Today, Bonnie and I are joined by Karen Allgood and Kristen Pizzuro to have a closer look at Colby's student support services and special education offerings. Whether it's getting a little extra help for a student struggling in a course, or trying to unravel the puzzle of how to make learning most effective for a student, we'll explore the many tools that Colby Academy provides to help students and parents on their homeschooling journey. We hope that you'll enjoy the show. Hi there, I'm Bonnie, Colby homeschooling mom of four lads and lasses, liturgical musician, popcorn and podcast fanatic. And this is Steven, homeschooling father of five and chief homeschooling officer for Colby Academy. Morning, Steven. How is your week going? Week is going well. Spring is coming in Arkansas. I've, I've, after growing up in Wisconsin, where spring might be coming in June at times, depending on the year, it's nice that Arkansas really honors the seasons. So we will, when when spring starts, we will we will be in spring. We will will not be in winter any longer. So we're we're coming up on that. I like that Arkansas honors the seasons. That's that's like a they might <laughs> the tourism board might want might want that for their purposes. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> My neighbors are getting a new roof. So if there's some banging happening in the background when I'm talking, that's probably what that's about. So just to forewarn everyone. Or it's my squirrel jumping all over Bonnie. So (laughs) it might not be you. It might be me. Or both. It might be like a concert. Yes. You'll get it in stereo that way. Okay. We are happy to have two friends of the Colby cast back with us today. This is Karen Allgood, who is the student support services manager. And this is Kristen Pizzuro, one of Colby's fabulous advisors. Welcome ladies. Good to see you. Welcome back. Hi, it's nice to be here. I always enjoy any opportunity to get to visit with you. So I'm glad one is before us here today. We are in enrollment season, getting our ducks in a row, hopefully, maybe for the 2024-25 school year. We're going to focus our conversation on the vast array of services available through the Student Support Services Program. Karen introduced us to this program last year in episode 145. It was kind of buried in the episode, probably around, I think, maybe the nine minute mark or so. And we will link that in our show notes. So today we're devoting the whole episode to this. Uh, Karen, what have you been up to since you last came to see us here? I have been up to all kinds of things, mostly just rolling out all of these new programs. So we're really excited about all of this programming that I introduced last year. But so it's just been implementing and trying to make it better and figuring out what to do and how to keep going. So it's been busy, but it's been great. Good, good. And Kristen, what have you been up to since you last came to see us in episode 155? How have you been? I have been really good. I've been talking to a lot of families and, uh, you know, dealing with my own children in their school. And that's been fun and been enjoying my youngest with Colby is in the resource labs. And just, I've really, really loved to see how much he has grown this year and it's been pretty amazing. So yeah. Good. Well, I want to hear more about that, about the resource labs in, in the context of, of this whole fabulous program. Karen, would you give us an overview of what's offered through the Student Support Services Program? Okay. So there's two sides to our support services. We have, on one side, we have what we call our instructional support services. Really, the hallmark of those is that they're open to all of our students, really regardless. We're not trying to target specifically students with special needs with those services. So that includes our homeroom program, our content area labs, our professional tutoring program, and our accountability mentoring program. So the homeroom program and the content area labs were not new services that we rolled out for this year, but we did significantly expand the offerings that we had within our content labs. The professional tutoring program and the accountability mentoring program were brand new. So those, if you're familiar with some of Colby's offerings, we had offered NHS tutoring where NHS students offered free peer tutoring. So what this is, is our teachers. Our teachers are, um, you know, we pull from from so our live teachers and our async teachers and various Colby staff to offer professional tutoring. So really at all of the grade levels and content areas, we offer that. And it has been, a really, really 
popular program. Accountability mentoring looks like your student meeting with a teacher or an advisor for just short periods of time every week, just to kind of check in and say, um, you know, how are you doing? What what things do you have coming up? Have you been keeping up with your work? Have you been turning it in? Oh, you have a test next week. Let's write that on your calendar. Kristen is one of our fabulous accountability mentors. So I'm sure she could kind of walk you through what one of those sessions looks like. And that would be would be wonderful. On the other side of our support services program is our special education program. And this is really targeting students and families that have a diagnosed or a suspected learning disability or learning need within their student. OK, so all the way from kindergarten where you're maybe not sure, but you think maybe you just need a little bit of extra help. Something doesn't seem to be something doesn't seem to be working quite right all the way up to 12th grade. And maybe you have, you know, you have paperwork and your child is diagnosed with dyslexia or autism or some or anything along those lines. That program is really there to help you. So we work with homeschool families within that program, helping you figure out how to how to really set up your environment and set up your day and choose curriculum and provide accommodations to your student. And we work with online students, providing accommodations within the online classes. And for those students who need more, really a higher touch and more intervention, we offer a resource program. And the resource program within our special ed program looks like your student being in their regular online classes and then also being in a small group resource lab. And these are staffed by special ed teachers and they pair kind of alongside your regular classes and provide a lot more intervention, scaffolding, support, and some higher touch accommodations that we were not able to do within our online classes before. Okay. I see quite often uh, discussions, questions online in the various homeschooling groups I belong to, uh, people seeking out, knowing that they need uh, some support in this area. They have perhaps been in a brick and mortar school, either Catholic or otherwise, and are finding that those aren't equipped to handle the needs of their students. And so they're looking for alternatives or there are sticking points. To, they want to homeschool, but they recognize that they have certain needs that they are very uncertain whether they can address those themselves and, and aren't sure where to turn there. So I think this this program is really amazing. I'm glad to get to be able to highlight that today and let people know that this even exists. So um, hopefully it is a, uh, the answer to many prayers that, that folks have been offering. So so how do folks get involved? How do, how do the students become a part of this program? What all is involved in accessing the services? So to enroll in our special education program, you just add it onto your enrollment when you enroll your students. So when you go to the Colby portal and you enroll for the school year, it's gonna ask you if your student has any special learning needs or learning disabilities, and you will just say yes. And then it's gonna pop up and ask you if you'd like to enroll in our special education program. And that is all you have to do. Once you've done that, you kind of come into our, our our own intake process. So we'll send you a questionnaire and we'll ask you to fill out some information kind of just about what you've done for school so far, what, what your student is good at, what maybe they're having some troubles with, what are you really hoping for them? Like, what are your hopes and dreams for them? What are you really, really looking for them to get out of this particular school year? And then we take that and we review it. We ask you for any evaluation documentation you have on your student and we review all of that. And then we set a meeting with you and we go through all of it and we talk about what you know, what you're really looking for, what your student has done, what is going to be appropriate for them. And we set a plan for your school year. So what if you're not sure whether you need those services when you're enrolling and you get to that question, what would you recommend for folks? You can always ask. I would, I would say to talk to your, if you're really not sure, you know, you can, if you think you do, you can always enroll and then talk to us and we can decide that that you don't. And that's not a problem. There's no problem there. But I've never had that happen. Actually, okay. <laughs> I've had plenty of people who aren't sure, and then they don't enroll. And then they come back and they go, oh, I should have done that. Yeah, <laughs> I've never had anyone come through and been like, Oh, I didn't actually need you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. 
there is a fee to enroll in that, but that fee allows you to have access to Karen and the special needs advisors to be able to, to talk about these things, right? Like regular advising does not include um, how to specifically address the needs of your, your students when they have special learning needs. Um, our, our regular advising staff just isn't equipped to answer those questions. And so just wanted to throw that out there. Yes. Important to note. Yep. Do you think if families are just kind of getting started with Colby and they might reach out for an initial call with an advisor, they can, that might be one of the things they present and then the advisor will, will alert them to them. Yeah, that happens all the time. Like you come in and you think maybe, you know, I, I'm okay. I don't, I don't really need a lot of help, but then as you're kind of getting into it and you talk to your advisor, they're, they're always happy to help you figure out kind of where you need to go. And so they absolutely can make that recommendation. Like, you know, I really think that this, this program over here would really help you. And we have some people on staff that really have, you know, some more specialized knowledge and can really kind of work with you and, and walk with you through this and figure out exactly what you need to do and how we can support you. Good deal. Good deal. Okay. What do you find the most common services needed to be? Are you seeing any patterns or any common, you know, what are you seeing most of? It like really runs the gamut. Okay. And I think that's one of the things about it is that it's, it's very individualized. Like we don't, we don't try to put your child, we don't try to fit your child into like a box into what, like we offer this, this, and this, and you have to fit into that. It's very individualized. So we come in and we, we read your 80 page evaluation document. We look at every single thing that, you know, if they, if they're a returning student, we look at every single thing they've done. We'll comb through Schoology and look at their work submissions to see what does their handwriting look like? You know, where are they getting this math problem wrong? Like we really do a deep dive on each individual student. And so I would say kind of recurring themes. We see kids who maybe just need a little bit of extra time. That's a really common one. You know, maybe you just, you can't, you can't do a timed test in the same way. You need a little bit more time to do that. Maybe memorizing just really doesn't work for you in the same way. And so what you need is like a cue card and that, that really helps you or, you know, you're really struggling with reading and audiobooks are life-changing. Like that, that's a common one that we see. Or the other one that we see a lot in the elementary years is just, you're really struggling with reading. Like it's not, it's not coming along for you in the same way that it is for the other students. And you just need some more, some more support there. And so we can refer you to some, you know, some different programs. If you wanted to do that at home with your student, all the way up to, we offer internal reading tutoring that's one-on-one with a reading specialist that has had really great results. My, my experience with my, I mean, my wife has, has always had a passion for this. And, and when I've seen her and other speaking with other people, I, I always got the, like, there was like a detective sort of quality to yeah. it, you know, a relentless detective sort of quality. It's like, I, I was always just so impressed. It's like, okay, well, we tried this. It's not working. It's trying this and it's not working. And so I know we've got homeschooling mothers out there as well who are going through that same process, mm-hmm. but I love that even though they might, you know, they, they see the school system may have failed their child if they, if they, mm-hmm. if that's the case, or they've just been working with their child and they say, this one isn't quite doing this. Yeah. Could it be because of this? Could it be because of this? But I love that they can come to a group of people that have a lot of experience and have done a lot of the research already. So it's like, yeah, you can go out and just kind of do all of that on your own, but why not yeah. come and actually get some help from people who have seen it, you know? You know, that's so funny. Your wife is a as an amazing resource for this stuff and definitely has a heart for these kids. And I love that. But what you just said made me laugh because I my background is in is as a special ed teacher in public schools. And that's what I used to say I loved about my job. My favorite thing about my job was that every kid was like a puzzle you had and you were trying to figure out that puzzle and you might fail 50 times before you figure out that puzzle and you just have to keep trying different things. And it's not bad when you try something and it goes poorly. I mean, it's better than doing nothing. You just have to keep trying and it's okay if the first 47 things you try don't work. (laughs) You know, that's okay. We'll just keep going until we figure out what is going to work, but it's worth it. 
Yeah. The willingness to address it and work through it. That goes a really long way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And think about what that means for a child who's sitting there too. You know, that's one of our things that we harp on all the time. Like there's nothing wrong with your child. They're exactly the way that they're supposed to be. And they're exactly the way that God made them. So it's on us to figure out how to get to through to them, you know, and we would never want them to be sitting in a space where they feel like they're not good enough or they're not smart enough and they can't understand and they can't get it and everybody else is getting it, but they're not. And so we say that to parents all the time. There's absolutely nothing wrong with your child. And we want to teach them that they're okay. And they're okay exactly the way that they are. And they should know that. I especially love that kind of coming from a public school background where you get got the impression that it's like, oh, there's a problem with these students. They're not as good as everybody else. And so you right. throw them the scraps of things and you yeah. don't really give them what they need. To, and I mean, that's part of the reason I'm sure a lot of our, our families homeschool, you know, mm -hmm. that, that could be a motivating factor, but I love that that's not the case. This is, this is, uh, they get, they get the good things. They, it's, yeah. they're, they're respected in the way that they're, they are without being told you're not as good. You're not, you know, I love that. I, that's so important. And that to me is, is the beauty of doing this within a Catholic school. Like we know that they're exactly how they're supposed to be. You know, we know that we, we aren't trying to fix them because they're not broken. Nice. We talk to families all the time, right? And I will hear from families who their kids were in either the special ed program at a public school and not getting what they need, right? So they just kind of put them in that, well, here, go to this room and their kids are capable of more, but because- that's not how the the special ed classroom worked in that public school. Um, then they are they're held back, right? Or they're not getting specifically what they need tailored to them because they have to do it as a class. Um, or I'll talk to families who are from Catholic schools where Catholic schools just don't have the resources to be able to handle some of these accommodations. So I'm really grateful that we are able to. Yes, there's a fee for it, but it's because we have to we have to pay for the specialty that we are getting. Um, we're not, you know, federally funded, which is where the public schools get that, that funding from it. But I feel like it is so much more personalized and individualized to each student. Okay. This is what you need to feel successful. Great. This is what you need to feel successful. And to, to know that you are beautifully and wonderfully made exactly as God made you. Um, so it's just, it's unbeatable. Yeah, as you were talking about that, it just was bringing to mind one of the things that just keeps coming up and how we allow our strengths or our weaknesses to define us as people and how dangerous that is. And so this is just coming through loud and clear to me that, yeah, it you may not be able to do this in the same way that somebody else is. That doesn't define you and we can get you where you need to go. We can we can figure this out just as like the person who's just whizzing through and getting everything their their apparent brilliance should not define them and that's just as dangerous actually as as the mm -hmm. as the other but um yeah it's tools in a toolbox right like that's that's how every occupational therapist I've ever met has ever described it like we just need to give you the right tools for your toolbox so that you can be successful and and I love that that idea of of handing that on to a child and imparting to them that yes, we're here to help you now. And we're going to, we're going to support you in, in being able to do for yourself what you can for the long run. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And really that, that it's not that they're just not doing it. It's not that they're lazy. It's not that they're there, that they can't get it. It's not any different than a child in a wheelchair that needs a wheelchair ramp. A child with dyslexia needs a different strategy for learning to read. And, and we can provide that we can help you with that we can we can show you how to do that it's I think it's hard for parents sometimes because it's invisible and it's hard it's hard for the rest of us to see but but it really is the same they have they have a dip they need a different path and we but it's not a bad path it's a good path and we're all going to get to the same place and we're all and we're all trying to grow in virtue and get to heaven. That's what we're trying to do. So if we need to learn to read a different way along the path, there's nothing wrong with that. I've seen some of the fruits of that already kind of 
firsthand, actually, in, in allowing a student to start advocating for themselves, you know, to kind of identify this thing and even to push themselves. So I've, I've had a particular one where it's, it's like, okay, they're being asked to do something that they know is really hard for them. And so they go and speak and say, this is something I really struggle with, so I'm going to try but just so you know, this is, you know, normally this is, this is what I have to, I do these things to, to do it. So they're able to, you know, to present themselves and say, look, I can try to stretch myself or whatever to do what you would like me to do. But just so you know, this is, and that was really impressive to me. I love that. And that, I feel like that's how we know that we're trying to help kids grow in virtue and maturity and not crushing them. We're not, we're not teaching them that, that they should just be able to figure it out. We're teaching them that they're, they're beautiful just the way they are. And they, they can communicate that to other people with confidence because they know that they're okay. Tremendous gift. Yeah. Let's talk for a minute about something that might not be readily apparent to people uh, seeking out services. And that is the documentation that that you generate or um, add to that will be needed later for future accommodations, such as standardized testing, ACT, SAT, other other situations like that, and uh, things that people might not realize that that they're going to need that documentation. I talk to families often who are uh, always hesitant, not always, right? So there are families that are hesitant to what they consider labeling their child. Um, and I, I try to flip the script a little bit because it's not, it's like Karen was saying, if your child's in a wheelchair or if your child's a diabetic, or if you're right, those physical things you can see on the outside, you're not afraid of, oh, well, it's not a label, right? It's, it's, it's who they are and it doesn't make them any less. Um, so by getting a diagnosis, you allow them access to tools, right? Talked about that tool in the toolbox. Um, in order to access the tools, sometimes we need to be able to have that firm diagnosis. Now, when homeschoolers are homeschooling, moms naturally fall into the, oh, well, my child's not ready to do this yet. So I will modify. I will do what I need to do to accomplish that. And that's amazing. And I think that's awesome. Um, what I try to do is I get families to think about, okay, what does that look like when, what are you going to do for high school? Are you going to send them to high school? Do you think they're going to need the same kind of modifications then? That is where you will need some kind of documentation to show, hey, this student is, is definitely, you know, on gray level. They just need a little bit of you know, different tweaking, modifying, um, in order to be as successful in their class as the rest of the students. Um, again, that also goes to college. So if they're going to have to take the SAT, the ACT, the CLT that we're offering now, um, in Colby, the, there are modifications that we can offer, but you have to have documentation. Um, and I do recommend if they're going to go to college, you can get modifications in college too. That is something that colleges are equipped to handle, but again, they need documentation and it's usually within when you get up to those grades in the last three years. So I recommend families who even have a child who's diagnosed when they're younger um, to get that updated diagnosis, at least in 10th grade or 11th grade so that we can make sure we have on file a documentation of modifications. Um, Cause that's one of the other things is sometimes the college board for the SAT and ACT will ask, does this child have a history of needing accommodations? And we can say, yep, look, here's all the paperwork that we've used um, for this student over the years and show the need and the application of those. And that's not a quick process, that interaction with with that entity and no. others like it, <laughs> even when you have all your ducks in a row. It's not. And I recognize the diagnostic process is also not a quick process and it can be expensive depending on your insurance. So that is not lost on me. It's not lost on the team. Um, we know that, you know, you could you get on a list and it may take one and a half, two years to get in to see the doctor to finally get a diagnosis. We know that dyslexia testing is not always covered. Um, and you know, same with dyscalculia. And so it's just, we, we recognize that and we know that. And so if that is something you are seeking, if you are actively 
okay, well, we're on the wait list. Can I still access these services? Yes. Yes, you can. Um, we just need to know that you are in the process of trying to find, trying to get in to get a diagnosis because we realize that that can be a lengthy process. Yeah. That's something I like about this program too, is that you don't have to come in already diagnosed. Like if you suspect something or if you, if mm -hmm. it is, uh, uh, becomes apparent as you work through your school year, then there's yeah. help for that. Yeah. And we don't, we don't require documentation within our special education program for homeschool families at any point. We always recommend it because we do, we do really feel that it makes a difference for you moving forward, especially when you're going to look at taking the SAT or if you wanted to have some of these accommodations in college, you want two things. You want a diagnosis an evaluation, and you want to show that you have a history of accommodations. So the paperwork that we generate for you shows a history of accommodations, but you really want to have that evaluation as well. For our online program, we do want an official evaluation and diagnosis for a student, but we absolutely will work with you during the process of getting one of, of I think something's not right. We'll still work with you with that and recommending an evaluation, helping you figure out how to start that process and then helping you understand the results that you get back, which can be a really overwhelming experience in and of itself. And then, and then we'll work with you in the wait time because Kristen's absolutely right. Sometimes parents can get in and do that really quickly and other times it can take a very long time. That's so nice that the help is there um, in the interim, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Kristen, since you take care of many of our Colby families who avail themselves of these services have need of them, what, what have you noticed about this year with this new program? What are your, I, I just want to give you the opportunity to kind of say a bit yourself from your experience taking care of these families. Sure. Uh, it's, it's absolutely the highlight of my, my time here at Colby. I love talking to them. It's my passion. Um, I, you know, come from the background of having my own set of, <laughs> of kiddos that need help. And so just feeling like I can be a sounding board and maybe I don't have all the answers or maybe a family just needs to say it out loud to be hurt, to felt, feel heard, right? I want to feel valued. I want to know that what I am telling you is being received and not brushed off. Um, and so I, I feel like I get that a lot from families is thank you so much for listening. And, um, I've had many families <laughs> over this year kind of bring me to tears with either their thankfulness or their stories. And I just, I am grateful for what they have given me as much as, you know, maybe they, they say that I've given them. So I just, I'm just really grateful for the beautiful families that I have run into this year. I run the gamut of, I have a homeschooling family. Okay, well, let's talk about this and let's talk about how we can modify. Call me back in two weeks so that I can know if this is working. And if not, let's hit the, you know, hit the, the board again and, and find out another way we can, can try something. Um, online students who just need some accommodations and we check in and say, Hey, how are those accommodations working? Um, this one's not working. Let's try something different. And then my resource students. And I have to tell you, I, when I talk to those families, I haven't heard anyone say anything less than these resource labs are amazing. And the teachers that run them are awesome. So I just, I just feel really grateful for being able to, to run across all of these families. Well, in, in this gathering here, you have three big fans. We're grateful for your help and uh, appreciative of all you do. Um, I would love for you to take us through some of the things you've mentioned, accountability, resource labs. What do those look like in the home environment or day to day? What does, what might that, what's that like for a student who is um, making use of those offerings? Sure. So I have, accountability. I've had a, a couple of accountability students from the beginning of the year all the way through to today. Um, and I really enjoy it. So working with the, the students, I was not sure how I was going to feel about accountability when it started. And it's amazing. I love it. It's so fun to get to talk to kids that are not my own. Not that I don't love my kids if they're listening. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's different. So it's fun. We get to go through, we start with prayer every time. And then I ask them about the time from our last session to this session, how it was, they've done anything fun and we just kind of catch up and then we start going through their Schoology account. So we look together at 
class by class. Okay. Here's, you know, here's French. Let's look at what is due for French for the next week. Oh, look, you have a test coming up. Let's plan out how we're going to study for that test. So, yep, you got to do your homework today. And then I need you to spend at least 10 minutes a day studying. And then we talk about what that means to study. Let's look at slides. Let's look at our notes that we've written. Um, and right. Talk about not rereading all of the content, but being able to to go through it. And then we do that for everything, every single subject. We also look at grades. I look at the grade book just to make sure that there's nothing missing. And then if there's something missing, we make a plan. Okay. How are we going to cover this plus the things that are due now? So, um, I've just had a lot of, of fun talking with, they're all so different and it just, it amazes me. God is so good. All of my kids are different. And so I see that in my own family, but even talking to, I have a couple of siblings, sets of siblings that I've dealt with and they're all just amazingly, wonderfully different. And I think that's so cool. So I love, yeah, I really like the accountability program. It's a lot of fun. So you have a standing time with each student each week or at some regular interval? I do. So they, we set in the beginning and at some students I have for a whole year and some we do in, in sets of nine. And at the end of those nine weeks, I always say, okay, is this time and, and day still working for you? Do you want to adjust it? So some I meet for once a week, 30 minutes um, at a time. And some I do twice a week for 15 minutes each time so that we can kind of plan the week and then, okay, where are we at at the end of the week? Let's plan, you know, what we need to do to get there. So it just kind of depends on what the student needs. We've had such great feedback from parents about that accountability program, too, just that it's so nice to have. It's not something that you can't do with your own child at home. You can absolutely sit down with your own child at home and say, let's look at your Schoology calendar. Let's pull out your planner. Let's let's figure out what we're going to do. But sometimes it's just really nice to have another person for your for your child to talk to about that. Maybe that's because you work. And so you need another set of eyes you know, that's really just kind of like helping you stay on top of it. Or maybe it's just because you really want your, you know, your student to talk to somebody else, because maybe they give you a lot of pushback. But but when it's somebody different, they're like, oh, yeah, I will do all of those things, because I definitely don't want to disappoint Mrs. Pizarro. You know, like, sometimes that's just how kids are. And so it's just such a nice service to have if you need it, you know. It sure sounds like it. Yeah. So this is yeah. fitting right into the my my wife's general contractor. Oh yeah, general contractor thing. And it's just <laughs> thinking about this, like with my wife, it's like, yeah, I know I could do that, but you know, do I need the SAS every every right. Monday? Uh, probably, maybe not. Maybe I could let <laughs> let that let, remove that from my my plate. <laughs> Or maybe you want to remove it for one kid, but another kid you want to keep you want to keep on yeah. doing it yourself. Or maybe you want to do it yourself, but you also want another person. I mean, it's that's totally fine. Or maybe you have a younger student and you are just wanting the check in for your own self. You know, that that has been you know, that's not something that I necessarily thought accountability. I didn't think about that at the beginning, but we have a couple of parents, homeschooling parents with younger students that are just like, I actually just want somebody that I can talk to every week because it keeps me on track and it helps me when I'm like, this is not working at all. You know, I want to try something different. And I was like, oh, what a great use of that. I didn't think about that, but that's such a good idea. Yeah, that's that is a really good idea. I mean, all of all of the the people talking about running your schedule efficiently and getting things done would talk Uh about creating these anchor points. You just created anchor points every week to make sure you're going to stay on track. That's I hadn't thought of that either. That's really cool. I can't take the credit for it. It was a brilliant homeschool parent that thought of that. And I was like, oh, yeah, you should definitely do that. And I've had a couple of those over the year, this year as well. And, you know, it's funny. I, so I also write as being a special needs advisor also tend to get um, some of the students, not all of them are having, having learning needs, but (laughs) so it's fun because those who have dealt with some of the learning needs, some of the personality traits that come through when you have a specific learning need are kind of fun. Um, It's just fun to work with those students and then to be reminded to be patient with my own student that maybe has the same diagnosis. Um, and so I'm like, yeah. Oh yeah, like this is just, I don't want to say quirk because it's not, it's, it's just the way they were made and it's just kind of funny, but. I and really- we do for our students that are in our special education program, we do prioritize their placement with accountability mentors and tutors to keep them 
within our special education team, if that makes sense. So if you're if you are enrolled in the special education program and your student maybe has ADHD or some high functioning autism, we would prioritize your accountability placement with one of our special ed team members, which is just a really nice perk for you because the person talking to your child now every week understands them a little better. Sure. And it's bonus helping them uh, cultivate conversational skills like interact, inter- mm-hmm. interpersonal, yep. carrying on a conversation with somebody that that might be, you know, that's, you could all use more help with that, right? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. And the the person that won't, if your child has ADHD and, and is spinning in their chair while they're talking to you, that won't go, uh, the, the stop. And you're like, I'm just going to keep talking to you because I know you're listening to yeah. me. This is what you need. To get. I'm like, it's fine. Go ahead. Spin. Like I, yeah, that's great. It's fun. I've had a lot of fun talking to the students. Yeah. Um, They're just so uniquely wonderful. That's neat. I've heard you mention resource labs a few times. So what, tell us about yeah. those. What, what do those look like? And all that. Yeah. So right now they are uh, in mixed grade levels. So we have three through five, six through eight and nine through 12 combined, but next year it'll be different. It'll be by grade level um, so that they can do all third graders, all fourth graders and all fifth graders and so on. Um, that way that the teacher can focus on exactly what they are covering in class. Um, so when they go to do a homework assignment, they're all working together. But for us, for my family, what that looks like is an, another, it's almost like accountability, but it's not because he, my student also needs help um, with completing some assignments and, and modifications and things like that. So it is somebody that keeps him on track. And when we hit burnout and nobody wanted to do their work and I kind of messaged and said, Hey, we're not actually like completing it. He's telling you who's doing it, but he's not. And so we like came up with a plan for some accountability on his part. Right. And he's growing and learning just so much more of having someone who really has a vested interest in how, how he is doing um, school-wise to make sure that he's not just saying he understands it, but actually understands it. Um, His writing has come a long way, which is one of, was one of my concerns in the beginning of the year. And and just being able to have more confidence and being able to put together a solid sentence that doesn't have the same cool, good as the adjective, um, you know, really kind of developing those writing skills. And so it's been really great to see that growth. And then on the flip side, as an advisor, talking to families who have seen similar, um, they just really like the one-on-one that they do get in those resource labs, Um with the, the teacher that can say, okay, let's work on this specific, whether it's re- a reading assignment or a writing assignment, a math assignment, science assignment, whatever it is. Um, and they can say, I don't, I didn't understand what the teacher said. And then the teacher, the special ed teacher can say, okay, well, let's, let's try to come at it a different way and, and see if we can, can explain it in a way that you'll understand. Yeah, they do a lot of review and reteaching within those labs. Like, you know, maybe if they've done, if they've hit like a kind of a difficult topic that they can see that the kids are struggling with. They also do some, some higher touch accommodations like um, test corrections and assignment modifications that we've never been able to do at Colby before. So maybe instead of a five paragraph essay, you're writing a three paragraph essay and we're giving you like a partially completed outline you know, to kind of help you get started and guide you along the way. Or maybe you're getting like a visual of all of the steps of your math problem to take into your math test, which, um, you know, that this teacher is making for you and teaching you and using with you. And then now you go to take your test and you can take it with you. So these are things that we really were not able to do before because they, the classroom teacher was not equipped to be able to do that. But the resource teachers are. So it's been a really successful program and I even more successful than we than we really kind of set out thinking. Um, I would say the biggest problem that we've had with resource this year is that we had wait lists and that was sad. <laughs> it was it was a horrible experience to have to say this would be so great for your student, but we don't actually have a space for them. You know, if something opens up, I'll call you, but let's see what we can do in the meantime. And we worked with them trying to, you know, help them along the way in the meantime. So I'm so excited about the way that we've restructured it for next year. You know, we learned a lot of lessons from our first year and next year is going to be, we, for one, we've expanded our capacity because 
I don't like telling families, we don't have a space for you. It, that was a terrible thing to have to say. So we've upped our capacity in all of our grade levels. And instead of having the, the mixed grade levels the way that we did this year, they're going to be grade level specific. So third grade, third grade resource lab is its own thing. There's no fourth graders or fifth graders in there. Seventh grade resource lab is its own thing. And there's nobody else in there. And we're going to take advantage of the new foundations classes for the students in our resource program, which is also really exciting. So if you can kind of picture a day in the life at resource lab right now, you go in and there's five other students in there, but they're all in different classes and different sections. And so the teacher is, is juggling five different literature assignments and five different history assignments all at the same time. And so we're going to, we're going to wipe all of that out because students in resource will all be in the same foundation sections. And so then they'll go into resource lab and it'll be like in history today, we did this and everybody's doing this assignment, pull out your assignment. This is what we're doing. Let's work on it. Did you understand that? Nope. Okay. Let's, let's go over that again. Let's redo that. Let's talk about that. And then, and we can really target the materials and the topics and the assignments so much more in depth and specifically because we're all kind of doing it together. Are these resource labs just for online students or can more offline students partake of them? As of right now, the resource labs only support students in our online program. We would love to grow that program in over time to support students in more formats. But as of right now, it only supports online. Okay. Tell us more about foundations courses that uh, folks who attended the school-wide address that was uh, offered here recently, which we will link in our show notes, heard about it. So this is the first we've talked about on the Colby cast though. So tell us about the foundations courses. We are so excited of all the things that we're rolling out for next year. Foundations might be the one that I'm most excited about. So I just talked about it in context of resource labs. So I want to back up just a tiny little bit because foundations is really not, we're not rolling it out as a, as a resource class, as a, as a special ed or a remedial kind of class. That's not what we're doing at all. Sometimes we hear from families and parents like, my, my kid just can't keep up. We need, we need something that's a little bit lighter. We can't, we can't handle the workload. It's, it's, it's a little bit too much. And so foundations is our response to that. So a foundations class is the same as a core level Colby class. We're using the same books. We're using the same materials. We're using the same topics. We have the same teachers, but we're going to lighten it up a little bit. So the reading is a little bit lighter, the writing is a little bit lighter, the workload is a little bit lighter, the tests and assignments and, and assessments are a little bit less rigorous. It's really like Colby Light a little in a little, little tiny way, you know, just make it a little bit more accessible to the students that maybe weren't able to handle the online classes before now. Okay. And uh, Tony Gazaldo, who is the director of the 6th to 12th grade online school, he he gave a pretty extensive overview of that in the school-wide yes. address. So I will link to that in the interest of time for our conversation today. Is there anything else you want to add to that? I was actually thinking for the previous thing, um, if you are in a, a homeschool situation or you're only doing a couple of online classes and you're looking for some specific support, tutoring is one of those things that they can they can help you with. If you are like, we are just struggling with algebra or we are just not getting these life science concepts or literature is a bear, um, you can do a tutoring package and that, that tutor will be, it's a one-on-one -on -one session. So it's an hour at a time, uh, 50 minutes at a time that you'll get that okay, this is what we covered in literature this week. And the the tutor will be able to go in and say, okay, this is what they covered. Here's what we're going to, you know, work on this week and, and make a solid plan for that student. So tutoring is something that, that they can do um, if they're not in that full online program or not in the foundations courses. Cool. I'm glad you brought that up. I was wondering about that. Maybe if you're just having a little bit of trouble with a particular content area, 
you know, maybe you need you need some reading help in those younger grades or you need some math help in the in the math that your that your child is doing. Maybe they need a little bit more help than you can give them. I know I maxed out at about middle school math. And after that, I you know, when my son needed math help, I was like, hmm, you're going to probably need to ask your teacher because <laughs> that's it's over my head now. Um that we can we can support you with that through tutoring. So and as just like when I said that students enrolled in our special education program are given priority for our special ed team for accountability, also for tutoring. It's, it's to some extent as available, but we have multiple homeschool families who have students that are struggling in a particular content area and we and bought a tutoring package and we assigned it to a resource teacher. So they're still getting some of that, you know, like specialized resource support, but in a different format for, you know, that works better for a homeschool family. And that's something that I've definitely heard from parents has been very, very valuable as well. So the sessions, the actual tutoring sessions are about 50 minutes in length, and you, you work individually with the teacher to kind of set them up on whatever schedule. So just like accountability, you can have a recurring schedule, like maybe you meet for tutoring on at Tuesdays at 10 a.m. every week. Or we also allow you to do it sort of as needed. So maybe you want to just have a math review session before your test every so often. You can do you can set it up that way, too. So we leave it up to the tutor and the parent to kind of work together with their schedule and figure out what works for them and what works for the student. And, you know, maybe this works now, but we're going to up it or change it or, or whatever later. And that's we let them work that schedule out so that they can they can figure out what works best for them. Okay. Well, as we are coming toward the end of our time together for this conversation, let's talk for a few minutes about ways to approach sticking points to availing ourselves of these services, either uh, parents who are unsure or reluctant, hesitant, um, having a hard time for whatever reason, accepting the need for this. We start all of those conversations with the with our favorite saying, which is your child is not broken. <laughs> okay. That it's okay that we want to help them. I I definitely run into parents pretty frequently that are concerned with their student being labeled or their student being different or or that you know they really just need to try a little bit harder here and that and that they'll be okay. I think sometimes with those those invisible kinds of of needs it's harder, you know, if if your if your kid broke their arm you would know, you would absolutely know that you needed to be, you needed to help them write their math problems because their arm is broken. They can't do it. It's, it's right in front of you and it's concrete and it's visible. It's so much harder when it's something that you can't see, but you know, I think as a mom, especially as a homeschooling mom, you really, you start to know, you start to see like, it's a little bit different. You, it, it's okay that you need to take some time with it, but but generally speaking, when I talk to parents, they know that something's there. They're just a little bit resistant to to boxing them in. And so we always say, like, it's not boxing them in. It's it's not it's not a checkbox. It's more like a roadmap. It's a, if I know that your kid is having a hard time with processing auditory information, I know that I need to present it in a different way. If your kid is having a hard time with attention, I know that I need to try some different strategies. And, and knowing what it is that your child is having a hard time with, are they having a hard time decoding the letters on the page or are they having a hard time understanding the language? On the As you're just watching them read, you don't know which one that which one it is, but we would address those in very different ways. And so it's so helpful to have that have that roadmap to really know where we should be pushing them and where we should be giving them more grace and where we should be accommodating them and where we should be trying totally different strategies. And so we're really trying to expand their options, not limit them. Okay. I could see cost being a sticking point too. How do you? Yeah, yeah. that's fair. Right. Um, it, it can be right. I know my kid needs help, but also this is not in our budget and our financial aid department is is definitely there for that. So I, I always encourage families, if you know that your student is going to need these services and they're not really like optional, um, please apply for the financial aid. And, you know, we will try to work with you and make sure that we can, can meet your student where they're at without it being a burden to your family. 
I don't know, Good to know. If, that, if that is accurate. If anybody knows any donors who want to just fund our student services program so we can just offer to every, every single student who needs it, yes. Yeah. I know it's always a concern. Everything is so tight with, for everybody right now. And, and, you know, even within, much as you try to run things efficiently and things, it's just like, and, and you mentioned this as well earlier, Kristen, about, you know, your advisor really wants to help in every way that they can, and they're going to do it, but it, they, they only have so many hours in the day and, and there's so much work to be done. And many, and oftentimes they don't have the specialty to do that. And so it just takes more time and it takes somebody else's time. And, you know, it's hard to get people who just want to put 40 hours or plus in a week and not get paid at all. Um, there's not a ton of those. We're not a, you know, we're not a religious order, um, all of those things. So, so we, we have to pay people and, and, you know, so, so that that's the financial aid if it's, if it's absolutely not there, but, um, you know, for the, for what you're getting, look at it on a monthly term as well. You're not going to get this sort of service for anywhere close to that amount of money anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Even yeah. break it down by session, right? Yeah. Like go down yeah. to a month and then go down to a week. And then they're going to meet four times a week in a resource lab. What does that look like for cost at the end? What are you actually paying that special ed teacher who went to school for years mm -hmm. to learn, to help your students? It's not much. <laughs> yeah. We try, you know, but again, yeah, the, if we can get the donor, send your donors our way to, to fund this and then we'll keep the cost super low just briefly is the financial aid application process that's is that part of enrollment or is there or is tied to that's something that people uh, tend to during their enrollment process too normally during enrollment they just they say yes we're going to need financial aid and then it's going to kind of direct them so into those things but we will kind of pull them through so they'll have a chance to work with their advisor to work if they know they're going to need it to say to work with Karen to say this is what we need to really have success and this is the cost. And then, you know, then we look at that and see, you know, how much can you afford and how much can we give you? Because we're, we're getting all of that money from donors. So, you know, we have to make sure we're being responsible for that. But if people are saying, this is what they need, if Karen and Kristen are saying, this is what they need, they need these things. then that speaks loudly to the financial aid team too. Okay. How do you like to approach conversations with students about the services they might be needing that they maybe didn't realize before and they have a recognition of, oh, this is different than what I've had before or what other people get or any of that? Yeah. So, and I think it's, it's similar to how we come at it um, when we talk to, to parents and just coming at it and saying, listen, you are made exactly the way God wanted you to be made. Whatever you are going to do in this world, whatever your calling is, God will provide you with what you need, but let's look at how we can support you until you get to that point, right? Like if you're going to be a priest, if you're going to be a teacher, if you're going to be a rocket scientist, whatever it is, um, you know, if you've got struggles, do you reckon, you know, talking to them and saying, do you notice that it's harder maybe for you to write down all the notes while the teacher is talking? Do you have trouble with putting together sentences? Is reading a struggle? Is your attention a struggle? You're trying so hard to pay attention and your brain just reaches capacity and you kind of float off and um, just kind of being able to recognize that maybe there are some struggles and saying, that's okay, that th that's a struggle. Can we help? Can we get some tools to help you with that struggle? Like it shouldn't always be, it's not that it shouldn't always be hard, right? we can all do hard things, but there's a point of like hard. And there's a part of like, listen, this is hard for no good reason. Like mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have to be quite so hard as it is right now. If you had the right tools in order to address that um, it's right. It's the same thing when you talk to either parents or even kids that suffer from like anxiety or depression, um, things are hard, but it doesn't mean that you just have to suffer in silence and, and continue to struggle. Um, there, there are ways that you can address that because that's not really a way to go through life. That wasn't God, God's intention wasn't for you to go through life on, you know, the struggle bus, as we like to say. <laughs> yeah. I like, I've heard Stephen say this line a whole bunch of times about how we're trying to stretch kids, but we don't want to break them. And I think that's, that's really what it is. And that's, 
that's a part of growing up just in general, right? Like really learning to understand yourself and finding your place in the world and learning to advocate for yourself and growing in, in independence and, and understanding. And so this is just, it's just another layer on, on that same process, you know? And so we want to, we want to teach you and we want to help you along the way, but you're really learning to understand yourself and you're learning what you need and, and, and what you need to do to be successful and, and ways having tools to help yourself, but also having tools to communicate to other people, you know, what you need and and how you go about things and, and really growing in that like wisdom and maturity and understanding of your, of your own self and how you are. Yeah. To be an active participant. Right. We're not leaving you to figure it out on your own. Right. And not, but, and you have a, you have a part to play in this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I have a senior in accountability who is always, um, if we're talking about something, he'll say, he's like, yeah, you know, because of my, you know, insert whatever. Um, he's like, I just struggle with this. And I'm like, that's okay. Like, thank you for like, he recognizes that that is a struggle and he doesn't like brush it off as like, well, I'm not going to do it. He's like, so it's going to take me a little bit longer. And I'm like, that is okay. It's okay that it's going to take you a little bit longer. So we kind of work into breaking it into steps, um, you know, for whatever it is, but it, you do see that maturity come across, especially in high school where they, they say, Hey, this, yep. I, I recognize I have this assignment due. I recognize it's due in a week. Um, it's going to take me longer. And I'm like, I know, I know it is. It's okay. That's like growth and virtue right there. It's huge. Yeah. It's it is huge. Yes. And so, I think it's a great yeah. reminder. Also, I know you've said it before, Kristen, on conversations we've had before, but uh, the opportunity that exists for the students themselves to talk to the advisors that, you know, <laughs> that I think opportunities I might be missed there that um, it, they they can talk to you themselves. Yes. 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 Right. We, I do, I do meetings with both parents and students. And so even when we're talking about planning out courses and we're talking about the following year. I love it when, especially, you know, that middle school, high school, bring them on with the, with the appointment. We can talk on the phone on speaker and say, okay, well, how did classes go this year? What was our struggle? Um, let's talk about what our goals are and, and work together as a team. And that way they have buy-in. And I, I'm a really firm believer in buy-in. I think that if students are like, yes, this is what I want to do. Okay, well, this is how we get there. And here's a path. Here's another path. Um, what interests you most? And so when they get to say, I want to do this and I want to do this and I want to do this, I know I need to do one of these history things, math things. And so, you know, we, we fit it in there. Um, but when they get I don't know. I feel like there's that sense of a little bit of control that they get to say, okay, yep, I want to do that. I want to do that. Yeah. I think that's huge. I mean, aware of these things so early again to me, just you, as you were talking, it was reminding me of, the, I talked about this in the podcast before, the Highlands Ability Battery, which I'm a counselor for. And I took it late in life, but it's, you know, I went through a TAC, a liberal arts, um, great books program where you're reading all of these things my ability to learn by reading is very low. So, I mean, I accomplished those things by by compensating and by doing it, but by knowing that at an early level, but also knowing this is, this is a, a struggle for me, but I can get through it and not, not be, like you're saying, not getting that label or whatever that thing may be in the right context, knowing that and getting the strategies to deal with it earlier rather than bumbling my way through so much, so much more helpful, so much more helpful. It's the difference between I have fill in the blank versus I am right. It is not who you are. Um, I have a struggle with whatever it is, um, but I'm working through it or I'm getting through it. I know I have the tools to get through that versus I am that and sometimes yeah. we see that students like students also know. So your teenager, your teenager knows that something's hard for them and they see the kids around them. So oftentimes we think that we're we're protecting them from that, but they know they they're in the world. You know, they see their friends. They see the other kids in their classes. They see the other kids at their their activities. And they they know they know like what you're saying, Stephen, that you knew that that it was hard for you and it. And it maybe didn't seem as hard for other people, right? Like 
Like you, you see that. And so sometimes it's so validating for them to be like, oh, this is why it's hard. Oh, there's nothing wrong with me. This is why it's hard. And I can deal with that. I can figure that out. Wow. You know what? I really like to listen to that book while I'm on my walk or I'm, you know, on the treadmill, like running and listening to my audio book, like, and now I've got all of it and I can do all the things, you know? So that's just, it's teaching them about themselves. And that can be a really positive experience. I think sometimes as parents, we worry that it's going to crush them. But the truth is, they already kind of know. And so when we just leave them struggling, then they feel like they're not good enough. And that's what we always want to avoid. Yeah, I think that has such uh, ramifications for later in life, adulthood. Yeah. So in our show notes, we're going to have links to uh, the school-wide address that I mentioned earlier and other webinar recordings that Karen presented one at, at the recent Colby Open House. Um, there are sections on the Colby website that are of particular relevance to this conversation today. There's a, a student support services page on the Colby website, as well as many articles in the Help Center, to which I will link in the notes as well. Elsewhere on the Colby website, the podcast page specifically, there are filters with which listeners can sort episodes by topic to find other episodes that include discussion on that topic at some point. One of those filters is student support. So check it out to find other episodes that touch upon Colby's student support services. Karen and Kristen, thank you so much for all the work you're doing for our Colby families and all you're pouring out in, in such beautiful service. We really appreciate it. Always great to see you. Thank you. Lovely to be here. It's always fun to chat with you guys. Subscribe to the Colby Cast on your favorite podcast app so that you don't miss an episode. And let us know how we're doing by leaving a rating or a review. And as always, feel free to email us at podcast at colby.org. Mary, our mother, pray for us. St. Maximilian Colby, St. Ignatius of Loyola, Holy Saints and Angels, pray for us. Ad maiorem Dei Gloriam. <laughs>